In this video, we're going to go over some of KX Studio's applications and a couple of other unique commands to Linux to bring in some plugins. We're going to use a simpler setup than with Carla as before using Jack Router. We're still using Cadence, which is one of the secret weapons. I'll go over that in just a second. Let me go over what you're seeing right here. We have YP log on the left, can send CW keyboard. We have a graphic uh, 3D spectrum analyzer right here. We have a oscilloscope so we can take a look at the waveform. We have VU meters for input of to Mumble. This is the input of everything that goes into Mumble and this is the one on the right here is what comes out of Mumble and how loud it is. So we took a little time to experiment from one computer to the other, other to find out just where the mumble AG circuit starts kicking in. And we used FL Digi for that on the other across the room here. And about four, minus 14.5 attenuation dB attenuation was about a half dB to a couple, you know, one to two dB just under where the AGC threshold. So I thought just go a little bit below that and 14.5 seemed to be a good estimation. So what we try to do is to get every input that we have, whether it's paddles, straight key, uh, we have an external K1EL keyboard coming in, and we also have YP log which I like the typing screen and you can also resize it so it's e it's able to play, uh, place it very well on this 720 laptop here. I don't have a 1080 screen on it so it gives me, uh, sounds great and it's, it has a good uh, ability where I can't resize FL Digi any smaller so it crowds up but I can see everything with this setup. Anyway what we did was we took FL Digi on the other computer and, and I would look on this computer at this VU meter on the right to see how loud it was getting. So every, every volume is set to 0 dB or just normal volume, 100% volume. And what was coming in was right around right around there. Right around minus 15 on this meter. Now this meter may or may not be the most accurate but it's close enough to do us some good. So then I would go over to the desktop computer and raise it up a dB and see if it changed the volume. Well, it, when we started at minus 20, it started rising till about minus 15, minus 14, minus 13, and then it wouldn't go any louder. So then I started up again and climbed up real slow, and it seemed to be this was just under where the mumble AGC starts to kick in and brings the volume back down. So for a second, you would see it go up, and then it would come back down. So, and that's the AGC circuit. It takes a second or two. And that's how we came upon this figure right here. So what we try to do is match every other input to mumble to that same volume. So we don't activate the mumble AGC. And we're not so quiet that other people can't hear us. So that seemed to be a good compromise. On mumble, we're using a unique plugin, the Pulse Audio to Jack plugin, and that is on Cadence. So before we were using Pulse Audio on the previous video, and we're still using that in the same way. However, we don't have to depend on the PAVU control to change everything. We're going to use Jack Router to do that. So here is Jack Router. I'm using Katia, which is a uh, a lightweight Jack Audio connection bay. There's no fancy stuff in here like you saw before with Carla. So we have the Pulse Audio. That's where Mumble. Mumble only uses this Pulse Audio. Now if you had Browser Audio, it would default to here now. Once it's activated, Browser Audio, would, or Desktop Audio, if you wanted to play a media file, would come right out of here. So you could still hear your own music or your own MP3s or if you, you were connected to a browser trying to listen to something, you could still hear it. It would come over here. 
and we're using jack mixer again so that we keep the inputs and the outputs separated and you can control how loud you want to hear it with jack mixer which is right here um, I'll go over that in a little bit so the other plugin we have that's useful from Cadence is this ALSA to Jack plugin. Now the order in which you do this, if you want to bring in something like I'm doing with this YP log, I want YP log to use the ALSA to Jack plugin. And it will stick to that plugin even though I activate Pulse Audio later. So I don't bring up Mumble just yet. I want to activate this and bring YP log up and see if everything is working and it is then I'll go in here to pulse audio and oh, and then activate that plugin and that's what mumble is using so then I can rewire everything in the jack router from this pulse audio so I can hear it or control the volume of it through jack mixer so mumbles here and this also to jack that's YP log I have some other plugins that we're using a command called JALV. I'll go over that in a second too, but that's how we've got individual plugins here. So this scope that you see is because of this plugin. We have Spectrum 3D right here, so we can wire stuff to it, so we can watch the spectrum analyzer. We've got the peak meters right here on the left and right of Mumble. There's the other one, so we'll bring those up together. That's the scope, and this is that limiter I had talked about before, so that the output of Mumble goes to the limiter first. Let's see if I can find that plug in here. There it is. And I have it set to minus 12 dB. So anything above that gets squashed by this limiter, so that it won't go up to 0 dB and hurt your ears if you happen to get an audio spike on Mumble. These are all LV2, free LV2 plugins that are probably could already be on your Linux system. So look in your user library uh, LV2 file and see if you have anything in there. Otherwise go to your Synaptic Package Manager and load up a bunch of them. But if you have the KX Studio system, you've already got these. KX Studio brings a bunch of them in too or has an option to check that you can get all of those that he deals with and he kind of overlooks these and makes sure they're they're coded to his specifications that guy's a genius okay so we have some plugins and for YP log we put a little bandpass filter and so with YP logged we have first of all I have to jump through some hoops YP log is a Windows program so you have to have wine on your Linux computer if you want to use it but it's one of the best software CW keyboards out there and like I said you can resize it and this is a very clean setup and this and the setup in here is, is pretty pretty nice you can make all sorts of adjustments in your spacings to have a very individualized sound that you, that you want to sound like right there these are the settings that I'm using right now and then here's how you set your fonts and set the transmit text color and how how large you want the font but it has a very good scroll behavior so when you get to the end it jumps over but it doesn't bob or bounce around or, or get hidden it's a very clean typing it's very easy to see any typos it's very easy to, to correct them and it doesn't take up a lot of space and it, there's not a lot of clutter here so there's not a bunch of menus or other stuff hanging around FL Digi is an excellent keyboard, but it, for this setup here, it's just taking up too too much room, and something else is going to get covered up. So, YP Log does a good job, but YP Log by itself is a little bit harsh on its sound because it's the way it uh, creates the CW is a lot different than FL Digi. So, for the bandpass filter, let me go over there briefly, and I'll show you why I'm using it as soon as I find it here. There we go. So I'm going to send a file with YP log and then I'm going to adjust this bandpass filter so that you can hear how it sounds. And you can look at the spectrum over here on the 3D spectrum and you can see the waveform shape a little bit change, but you'll be able to hear some 
a little harder key and a little softer key as I adjust these. So I'm going to try to take this all the way down so you can hear what YP log sounds like without it. And it may be good enough. I'll let you be the judge. soft. A bit mushy. So dial it in. We're going to dial it in just so you get the right edge noise. It's subtle. You probably need headphones to really hear it. And we'll hit escape and clear. But that really cleans up YP log. And it's uh, not a, not at a great cost to the CPU at all, and you can dial it right in. The other thing is that this setup allows you to knock this volume from zero down to, you know, using that minus 21 here using this jack mixer. So I can send software keyboard here. I have my K1EL outside the computers, and it's attached to a 555. And that 555 is going through a Hypermite active bandpass CW filter. And that cleans up a harsh square wave of a 555. And this is exactly what you're hearing after the 555. That's what it looks like. Using my paddles now, I'm keying with the Ultra Pico Keyer Plus. And that's keying the 555. I have a straight key hooked to the 555. And then I have the K1EL keying that 555. So I have all my Morse code instruments, plus if I prefer to type well, to, so I can visually see any typos, that's why I use YPLog. And it's really good to be able to see your spectrum going out to everyone on Mumble and to see your waveform. It's also nice to see what their waveform is. So that's coming from another computer with FL Digi. And the FL Digi is set to about 8 millisecond rise time just to, to show the sim symmetry. And the edges on, on uh, FL Digi are very well made. It's an excellent program, too. So all the volumes are set to about the same. You can adjust what you want to hear with this jack mixer, but it won't affect what goes out to the input of mumble. The input of mumble will always be right about there. And on mumble itself, let's go to another room. And what we did to determine this, where where the ideal spot on Mumble is, if you just want to estimate it, is, let's send a bunch of zeros here. So you take your mouse, kind of line it up, right about there where it is. I'm going to hit tab here. Now I'm going to take the paddles and see if it's close. Yeah, pretty close. So that's how we came up with an approximation of where on this VE meter on Mubble, where is the zone where you're still under the AGC circuit. And we tried to do the same thing. So that's going to about the same spot too. So everything to the input of Mumble should be at the ideal volume. And I like this setup because it alerts you to your spectrum, to the waveform, to your volume, either what you're sending or what you're hearing. It helps you with help others to get their uh, station set up right too. Let's go back uh, to the jack router again. I have an instrument tuner here. If I can find it. There it is. So let's take it down. It kind of tells you, I found this useful too, to see exactly 
how it's being measured. So that's just one of those LV2 plugins. This is a standalone program. The look ahead limiter is its own program. I already showed that. Simple scope is an LV2. This is an LV2. The meters are LV2s. And here's the LV2 list. You can find out what yours is with this command right up here. LV2 LS. And see how many plugins you have. Then when you want to do this command, this JALV.GTK to bring up one of those plugins, just find find which one you want. Say it's this one. Highlight it, copy it, type in JAL JALV dot GTK space and then copy paste that right there, which is what I did here, and hit enter and then it'll bring up the plugin and its GUI. So in Synaptic Package Manner, look for the JALV and you should have a uh, be able to download that with Synaptic or your other package manager. So Cadence, let me review now. So Cadence from KX Studio is just wonderful because you have two different plugins, the ALSA to Jack plugin and the Pulse Audio to Jack plugin which allows me to use desktop audio. I cannot select the sound card from YP Logs menu system, so I, it defaults to the sound card. So if I start with the ALSA to Jack, I just hit the start button right here. That will come up in the Jack Audio Connection Bay right here. And I know it's YP Log, but it's going to be too loud, so I send it to the mixer under keyboard right there and keyboard I lower it down to an appropriate volume that will go to mumble or to go to that uh, bandpass filter and then to mumble and then we adjust it accordingly so that the output of the bandpass filter again is just that zoned out ideal of, uh, input volume so that you don't activate mumbles AGC circuit so once I come out of the bandpass filter, I also go to the keyboard out, which is right here, this mixer. And that controls how loud I hear it if I want to hear this keyboard or if I don't. If I don't, some people don't like to hear the keyboard, so let me show you that real quick and I'll show you that it's, it's still going to send a mumble. So there it is. So you see it's still going to mumble. And the VU meters are lit up, but I don't hear a thing. So if you don't want to hear your side tone, and for really fast typing, it sometimes it's better that way. So you just concentrate on your typing. It also gives you a little bit of a break, so you don't constantly hear the same pitch. And it's easier to hear uh, QSK break-ins. And on Mumble, it's full QSK, and it's fast. So everybody can be talking at the same time. So if somebody interrupts you, you're going to hear it. So that explains the ALSA to Jack that we use for YP log. Now we will also want to hear the output of Mumble, and we want to hear our own desktop audio. And if you know, if if you're also maybe you have a light background music playing, or you're just listening to something in between this or that, or you wanted to check something and then report back, you can still do that because when you activate the Pulse Audio bridge, which I've already done. Now all desktop audio will default to it. It'll come out of here. And also the mumble input is waiting right there for everything. So you send everything to it that way. So I have my YP log. I've got my paddles coming in right here. This is my microphone input jack where the 555 goes to the hyper mic to the output of the hyper mic goes to the input of the mic jack and it goes to the Pulse Audio source out to Mumble at just the right volume. I also have FL Digi going there. But I, you don't want the output of Mumble going back to the input of Mumble, so you don't, you don't wire it up like that. If you had a media player that would go inside Jack, you could, it would be something like, look like this, and then you could wire it up also. wanted to play an audio file for it and share it with somebody on Mumble. 
So mumble output here, mumble the mumble input goes here, so you just wire up whatever you want to go to mumble there. I've got these plugins as helper apps. We have the uh, spectrum analyzer to see how everything's doing. And that's pretty much the jack audio connections there. This is my screen recorder, which I'm recording the video with. So I think that pretty much covers it. Make sure we got all these apps here. Simple scopes, yep. So the combination of all this makes for a very nice setup here. I really like seeing the 3D spectrum of not only what I send, but as all also of what I'm receiving. I like the option of using YP log or my paddles. All at the same time. Plus, with the way we can resize these apps, this is plenty big for Mumble. And if you have some chat information you want to send, just type it in there. And it goes right to the room, or you click on whoever you wanted to want to send. Say hi to Chuck here. Goes right to him. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to uh, share about the KX Studio. There'll be some information in the show notes. This is not an advanced tutorial to show you how to set this up. It's just to showcase it and why it's worth going into the effort to research it and learn about it. Thank you for watching.